Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Winfried Singh. Hi, my name is Ailaria Cortez. Hey, I'm Hello everybody, my name is Kira Riar, and I am the CEO of Studers. Now, through the research that we have conducted, we believe that we have encountered a problem that has plagued our society for decades too long. Through the research that we conducted, we saw that 82% of all American students failed their algebra exit exams, and over 71% of all American students failed their English exit exams. This shows us that there is a need for an educational resource that students can not only use for on a daily basis for education, but also to improve themselves socially. In Patino, 36% of all students are failing a course. So we have come up with a solution. So now the solution we came up with is Student SOS. Now before we go into what Student SOS is, I want you to think about a high school student. A high school student who is socially inactive and doesn't have a lot of friends. A high school student who is trying to understand a topic but he didn't understand that in a class. We are here to help out those high school students with Student SOS. Now, what Student SOS does is that it has the tutoring functionality. Now you would have an option of either registering as a tutor or a student. Once you register as a tutor or a student, it will mention a bunch of personality questions. After you answer those personality questions, you would be matched up with a tutor and a student who have the same personalities. Now, we believe that if there are two people who have the same personalities, we would, they would make good friends. And we are here trying to eliminate that socially inactiveness through our student SOS. Now, there will be also a function about geofence. Now what geofence functionality basically does is that if there's a person isolated from a bunch of students and is sitting alone by himself for more than 20 minutes, it will send a notification to the link crew president. Now it is the duty of the link crew president to go out and ask that person how he's feeling and get him engaged into the school. And that is basically what Student SOS does. Z. Hello, my name is Miguel Mordragon, marketing manager. Hello, I'm Kira Riar, I am the CEO. Hello, my name is Winfrey Singh. Once again, I'm the vice president of Studers. Hi, my name is Aida De Cortez, and I am the executive manager. This is UVP. We are the first company to provide an innovative one on one peer to peer tutoring. To high, to high school students. It will allow the students to be creative while you understand the concept. So going along with what Miguel said, our company is different because our company mainly focuses on high school students and our overall goal is to help this, the student as a whole rather than as an individual. So for our customer segment, we our target audience is the school districts and we will be charging the school districts $1.99 per student per month. The school districts will then, in, will then let the teachers know about it, and then the teachers will engage the students. So, going into our actual product, this is our app. It is actually constructed and will be uploaded later this week to the Apple Store. It's waiting approval, and the Google Store as well. This is the first page you see. Uh, it is to sign up. You type in your name, your password. It'll automatically choose your school for you based off where you are standing at that point in time and your grade level and whether you want to be a student or a tutor. If you want to be a tutor, you would have to be pre-approved through the admin panel as we do not want kids who are not understanding the concept clearly uh, to be teaching it as well. So after you log in, this would be the first page you see. Uh, we chose to go with a leaderboard icon as well to help engage the students because as Fresno Unified has currently introduced a strides icon on your grade book. So kids are competing uh, to get the highest grades they possibly can so they can lead in points. And uh, that's essentially what we're trying to do with the leaderboards. When you click the need help icon on the home page, you will arrive right here at the need tutor section. And you select your subject, uh, you select the timing, and you select the room. So the reason we put select the meeting place is because we want the admin to have some control 
over what is going on, but we also want the students to be able to express their full creativity as well. We have an optional uh, footer where you can add notes and comment as well. And this will be regulated fully, so if a student uploads an inappropriate image, uh, we will know right away and we will be notified by a scanner that we have implemented. And on the comment section, they cannot write any words that are inappropriate as well because there is an algorithm or software in the background that prevents that from happening. This is the notification you will receive when your tutor is on the way and when you have a new request available. So this is essentially, um, this will pop up on the home page of your phone as well. So you will see it as soon as you're a tutor and you get a notification, you will notice right away that you have a notification. You can open it, you can either accept or decline. This is your leaderboard. So like we mentioned earlier about the whole strides and leaderboard thing, uh, we will be able to add activities where students can receive points from. And uh, also we will be able to give tutors points for engaging the students based off the reviews. And we will now uh, talk about the website real quick that we have created. So this is studers.com. We own three domain names, studers.com, studers.org, and studers.net. So they will all redirect to this website. Uh, we chose to go with a simple uh, format of the website to kind of really play out uh, what our app is going to look like. So we have the first thing you see is available in Android and App Store. And uh, you can click on either of those buttons and it will redirect you to both stores and you can download based off what phone you have. And when you scroll down, you will see more screenshots of what the app will look like and uh, the functionality of the app. And uh, once again, you have the download icon and these are the screenshots. And then you have a newsletter at the bottom. So once you see at the top, you can see FAQ. Those are frequently asked questions. Uh, we answered most of the questions that are frequently asked. Uh, by students and by consumers that are looking into our product. And uh, we have another newsletter at the bottom. And uh, finally, we have our support or contact page. So this will be a page where you can get in contact with us if you have a specific question or would be interested in our product. This is, so, uh, this is social media and Instagram. We have 124 followers on Instagram. We sure expect 300 of the end of this month. Mode 14 is awareness and promotions. So the basic platforms that we plan on spreading our business about is Facebook and Instagram, and we are only using this strictly for presence. Now let's talk about the revenue streams. Now, as you can see, there will be a startup cost of $25,000 for our business. And that is what we are asking for the investors. Now, those $25,000 include administrative costs, app and website development costs, uh, attending conferences such as CSBA, where we will be talking to Fresno Unified and show our presence, and also the marketing fees. Now there will be SGNA or reoccurring costs through our, throughout our years. Now those will include even participation fees. Now there are various events such as the Diamond Challenge and etc. which we would need to participate in to get more and more money and more and more, more investment so we can include features like the Geofence into our app. It would also include hiring a website and app developer as we don't want any problems to be uh, within our website or in uh, Student SOS. There will be Student SOS monthly charges, which will be for our website, our app development, HostGator, our host, and there will be marketing expenses as we will be marketing our app on various websites. Now, the total addressable market would be around $362,000. Now, if we charge $24 to over 15 million users and in our first year if we get 22,124 users which will be of Fresno Unified we will have an estimated number of $362,000 of our total addressable market. Now moving on to the serviceable addressable market if um, again out of the 15 million users if we get 22,000 which is just Fresno Unified we will have 263,000 money of revenue with a 70% of conversion rate and people using our app. 
Now moving on to the market share, $530,000 would be our market share with again 122,000 users and we are here basically focusing on Fresno Unified and hoping that 100% would be the conversion rate and every single high school student in uh, Fresno Unified would accept our policy. Now the investor plan, now what we are asking you here to do is invest $25,000 and you get 5% of the equity. Now, after money multiple, after five years, you will have a money multiple of 5x. Now, after you get a money multiple of 5x, you will have a net return of $45,200 in five years. This is all about profit and investing the money. So, like we were stating earlier, the conference we would like to attend is the CSBA conference. This is our main target audience as most superintendents and board members across California attend this conference. And if we sign with Fresno Unified, they are the fourth largest district inside of California. So that will def definitely hold influence over a lot of uh, other districts as well as uh, many other districts follow our district because it is so big and it is run so properly. So we will go to this event and uh, mostly advertise there because uh, this is where we believe we would get our best return on uh, money that we are putting into marketing. Now moving on to the future's plans. Now we are here trying to partner up with Fresno Unified. 22,000 users will be enough to show our presence and to show that we will have effect on today's high school kids. So for the exit strategy, the current plan as the exit strategy is to sell the company within five years and we do plan on selling the company to anyone whose morals are correct and who wants to give us a reasonable scared. price. Now, before ending this presentation, I would like to ask you, would you like to help out a single student in high school? Would you like that single student has more friends now because of student SOS? What do you want that single student to succeed in their life because they are now being tutored about certain topics and they're getting higher grades? We, with Student SOS, are here to achieve and help out those students. And we will through Fresno Unified and all of the other districts. Thank you for your time. Any questions, comments, or concerns? <coughs> So how much does the app cost like if I was to download it from the Apple Store or the... So the app will be exclusively, uh, exclusively available to school districts. So we don't want to charge the students at all. We would like to directly charge the district and they will hand down the app by putting it in one of their portals. And uh, you could download it from there. But we were exclusively targeting the school districts as uh, we want to make this a resource uh, available to students and we don't want to charge them. As you had mentioned, one ninety nine. Does that mean like one hundred ninety nine dollars? Is that a dollar ninety nine? Dollar ninety nine. Oh, so is that a yeah? A dollar oh, ninety nine per app. <laughs> okay, download. I can scratch that off. <laughs> per, student, per student per month. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you said one hundred ninety nine dollars. So, yeah, no, it's a dollar ninety nine. And based okay. off the research we've done, uh, college wise, because that would be our, I guess, our indirect competitor, because we don't have a direct competitor yet. Uh, we have Course Hero, Wizent. They all charge $10 for two tutoring sessions. So having a resource available to students where they can get as many as they need from their peers uh, would be you know, a really, really important resource to them. Because like we um, forgot to mention, uh, within Fresno City, we talk to a lot of students that are alumni from a Fresno High School, Fresno Unified High School. And 98% uh, of them told us that they learn better from their peers. So this tells us that if we really, really put our app to use with good incentives and good intentions, uh, we could definitely make it work. What's in it for the tutors? So why would they do this out of the goodness of their heart? So uh, that's a great question. I will address that right now. So we will be offering, um, out of the revenue we make, we are also going to hold um, kind of a scholarship challenge. So whoever has the best response and gets the best reviews along with holds the most community service hour tutoring sessions and um, they will automatically be entered into a scholarship fund so they will receive scholarship grants to the college that they select to go to right. and uh, also all of the tutoring sessions count towards community service hours as they are helping 
So that's kind of the incentive they get. And for students, the incentive students get is um, the top, we're thinking about doing the top 30 to the top 50. Uh, students at the end of the month will receive a pizza party uh, from wherever we decide. Because, you know, no, was, yeah. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Fresno State, when I went there, had peer tutoring. Of course, their tutors were paid. Yeah. But you went to the tutoring center and you signed up for the course, and then you would show however often it was, like twice a week or three times a week, whatever that was. And usually it was a um, lab assistant, so a lot of times you were meeting them at the labs, because if it was for chemistry or math or whatever. Um, and I'm sure that they were paid by the university, but it was definitely a very good service. Yeah. So um, there's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, one, one thing I was going to, okay, so there's always the current the concern about safety and, you know, vetting and, you know, all these kind of things for your tutors and such. So explain a little bit about how that process, who, who vets them, what's your, you know, you know do you, I don't know if you do any background checks or anything like that, but just how do you alleviate me being as a parent, giving an app to my son or daughter, um, you know, who's using this and who's going to go off and see a tutor, how do you comfort me to know that I can be, this is, this I can trust this. So one thing um, I personally actually talked to Fresno Unified about, uh, some people that will remain unnamed because they don't want to be named, they actually told me that they would be I guess they would be very happy if the app was only implemented within schools. So the app has an API compatibility, so administration can push their gradebook um, to the app and they can approve and deny tutors that meet the criteria and tutors that don't. And um, it will be only held in certain areas that are regulated by teachers. So we want, it, we want it to be to where students can express their creativity, but we also want it regulated to meet the safety concerns like you expressed to us. So they'd be vetted only by their grades? They would be, they would be vetted by their grades and by Fresno Unified. Because Fresno Unified, um, if you have certain arrest records or stuff, you are put into different schools uh, based off of what your history is and what you're doing currently. Uh, so they will be in a regulated classroom along with, I guess, yeah, so like grade book, but it's going to be mainly based off of Fresno Unified's part as well. So only admin would see that part? Yes, only admin. We don't want any access to that because we're still students. And for the market share, you have um, 530,000. If there's 74,000-ish students in Fresno Unified, where is that? Uh, there's 22,000 high school students. So 74,000 is the total number of students, including middle school, preschool, kindergarten, and uh, elementary school. So will you strictly be focusing on high school? Yeah, as of the moment, school? yes. Okay. Uh, because high school is what matters is it sets you up for college. So we want students to have the comfort knowing that uh, they can get into a good college or go where they want to go. And let me understand, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, 15 million users you kept using now, where, where, where is that coming from? Uh, 15 million is the amount of uh, people who are in the United States or amount of uh, high school students in the United States. Okay. And uh, that was just to, there to mention that uh, those are the amount of people or high school students which are in high school right now. And uh, 22,000 of those are to mention uh, Fresno Unified and show how much profit we can just make out of a small number, and there's 15 million users, so okay. we can definitely get more. How many of them want tutoring? How many of them want tutoring? Uh, 22,000. How many of them want to be tutored? Well, do uh, you want one? So we have a personal example. Um, we haven't really conducted this thorough of an analysis yet because we're kind of just finishing up our app right now, and right when we finish, we will, you know, obviously conduct the analysis that we need. Uh, but our teammates, we have Miguel, we have Yaya, and we have Star. And uh, one of our teammates actually left because she wasn't meeting the criteria that the school required. So um, that was actually, that kind of hit us really hard. And we saw that this is a problem and it needs to be addressed. And now she said if she would have had this resource, it would have helped her quite a bit. So after this is done, uh, we will definitely put it into full on testing within Patino and kind of use Patino as our MVP and see if we can uh, improve based off of here and then we'll take it to Fresno Unified. So you know, part of the challenge, and, and who's most likely to want tutoring? The A student, the B student, or the C student? It would be the student that is 
most likely receiving B's or C's. If they're in the D range, then it doesn't really look like. Well, from my own experience doing a lot of teaching, I don't think the C student really gives a damn. <laughs> so they're the ones, it's like, if I put extra credit in my course, the C student is, no, I'm happy to get the C, happy to get the D. The B student, yes, because the B student, but then the B student can be pretty comfortable with the B. Uh, it's usually the A students, you know, because they don't want to leave anything uncovered. They're the ones who are really bring in there. So it's just a fine system that, you know, the, the high achievers usually want to ensure high achievement. They're the ones most likely to want to uh, use that particular system. Not uh, university. Uh, and I can't speak for uh, the one young lady who was on the team. By the way, I really like your slides. It was really good. You threw me off on one thing, though, and I couldn't. I was trying to process it got me there was something about lonely students that every 20 minutes they'd be annoyed by you or something yeah you know, I, I didn't quite yeah. understand how that <laughs> so um, basically as mentioned in the problem one of the biggest problem was uh, students high school students being socially inactive and if they're not basically socially inactive means that you don't have a lot of friends you don't have people to talk to and share your feelings with now geofence is like a functionality which has the location on your phone so if you're in school and let's say all of these students are sitting over there and there's just a single guy sitting all by himself on a different table not talking to anyone for the past 20 minutes now what geofence basically does is alert the link crew president or whoever we are giving the functionality to or a teacher and they would uh, basically just go on meet the person and be like and make him engaged into the school make him feel that he is wanted in the school I so want to clarify real quick it's not going to be based off the exact student because we don't want to be singling out students but we will be sending link crew leaders into that area so they can socialize that general area and bring students who they Maybe see there's a reason he's sitting there. Yes. Well, I mean, he's actually I think very. Didn't have I think you got the premise of the 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 do the, the the lunch don't eat lunch alone. Did you did, did you get have you seen that program at all? <laughs> it's based on the same concept of people eating in a cafeteria all by themselves and <clears throat> and bringing more social uh, interactivity to some of these people that are like that. I mean, that's that's how I saw it and that's how it refers to me. And it's a very very successful program. And the kids that were in it are just like so glad that it is because they feel awkward or you know they sit by the table because everybody has clicks in high school and all this kind of stuff so i didn't know if you got that but if you didn't good for you because i think that's a a good thing and and i think i think the other thing i think it helps is is just with the high suicide rates and depression and and all the things that go on i mean i think there's another intri or, uh, intrinsic value that i think this also could hold yeah. again i don't know you know the acceptability if somebody wants somebody to come over and say hi as Tim would say you know I don't know that but unless they're maybe signed up and they're comfortable with that I don't know but you know that could be worked out and well, sure can, you can you have a culture in the school that just says why don't you walk over and sit with them and ask him how he's doing I mean that's a that's I mean, way but, for but again it's something to be you know, yeah well I mean it's easier said than done because again it's you know having a high school kid a lot of times they don't want attention on them they don't want to be the one that goes and does but anyway um, I, I get the concept, so I mean, I think it's, I think it's, it has another value that I think you, you can sell to the, to the, to the school district, you know, yeah. as another intrinsic value. I, I think the other issue is that incentive for the, uh, uh, the tutor. In there, it seems to me, if you are getting community service credit, that would be an incentive. I think that is where you really want to have that emphasized. Uh, I don't know if it's a party's work. Yeah, that's, that's for the students to use the yeah. app, yeah. But to me, I mean, that's something I need to fulfill that requirement. And tutoring, if I can do that in place of doing something else, something I feel skilled at, mm -hmm. that would be something I think I would encourage a lot. Yeah, I think the thing is you're bringing technology, which students are very much, I mean, you know, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to top technology. I have to learn it. You know, you guys grew up with it. And more and more, you know, it becomes that part of your lifestyle. And the more that you bring those kind of things into their into their realm. I think they might be more inducive to do tutoring because it's online. I think they have much more acceptability, you know, doing it this way versus, you know, having to go to the counseling center, can you get me a tutor, blah, blah, blah. You know, again, I think it brings some some of the variables that, you know, I think that, that students would maybe embrace a little bit more or try it more 
and then you'd have the social peers saying, hey, I tried, you know, student SOS and hey, it really worked for me and so forth and so on. So And it might take some of the anxiety out of oh I have to correct. Do the tutoring and correct. you've met the tutor, you've spoke to the tutor online, and then you yeah. have a common space which um, you know, if you could speak to the admin team to you know, define a space where they don't choose a room, but admin has already selected a yeah. room to host. I can be anonymous a little bit without having to be, you know, come up, come forward and say, hey, I'm stupid, I need a tutor. Yeah. That's how a lot of times, that's, I know that's what my, my, my son always felt. It's like, oh, I'm a failure, I need a tutor. And they don't want, you know, there's, there's that disconnect and wanting to do that. I think be able to, hot, you know, be a little bit more anonymous and being able to talk through text and, you know, doing some of the things that you're doing, I think it might open up a little bit more of an invitation that maybe they might try it versus the old way. So. Definitely. And one thing we actually did forget to mention is there's, as soon as you sign up, there's personality questions that you answer. So uh, students and tutors would also be linked up based off of that. So like-minded individuals would be kind of learning off of each other and helping each other. That's kind of how we looked at that. And um, if you have any feedback on that, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention it. But, uh, no, you did. And, and yeah, I thought that was good. So how do the students know that it's available? Like, does the school district tell them, or is like, do you have like mobile display that will target their phones and saying, "Hey, at Patino, we have student SOS." So um, we would like to do it kind of a cultural way because we, as students, can tell a lot of students to download an app, uh, but I haven't really been successful in convincing anybody to do it. But we thought that teachers could be a very useful resource. Because if they even give out an assignment saying, hey, if you need help with this assignment, use this app, and one student downloads the app, we would consider that a success because that one student is getting help. So we were mainly relying on rallies at schools and teachers to really help pass down the idea. Uh, but we also have social media campaigns, like we stated before, to kind of target that audience. And uh, us ourselves are going to be marketing it as much as we can. You need to get more followers though because you only have 124 right now. Yeah, we just started about a week and a half ago and uh, we grew to 124. Uh, but we're using certain hashtags to target certain groups of audiences and tagging as many individuals as possible. And I even have a little bot running in the background to uh, target those individuals as well. So, yeah. And are, you said you have Instagram and Facebook yes. and all of those things? Okay. Um, have you talked about Nelson? Yeah, I have. Superintendent Nelson, yeah, he's a great guy. And what does he think? Can you present this to the board? Um, I haven't directly talked to him about the idea because I don't want to bring it to him until it's fully developed. Mm -hmm. But I've talked to Mr. Sawyer, who is a um, goal to leader, and I have talked to Kurt Madden about it, which is the director of all the communications within Fresno Unified, and I've talked to the executive secretary uh, for Fresno Unified and kind of gotten all their thoughts and compiled them and uh, really mix it in. But I've talked to quite a few people there, uh, a couple of names I don't really remember, but just... Well, if, if it were adopted by the district, couldn't they use the edutext to sh push it out there? To yeah, yeah, they could do that as well. That's a great idea. I actually didn't think about that, yeah. Um, and then the only other suggestion I have, because I think it's a great idea, is um, at the end when you have um, the, your, your app with questions and answers and support, um, maybe there's an opportunity to rate the experience. So whether I'm a student that got tutored or whether um, uh, I'm the tutor um, to allow them to kind of rate it so you can share the success of the product. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, we actually brushed over that as well, but after you complete your tutoring session, you'll have a one through five star rating along with a review. So um, if you give them a bad review, obviously you're not gonna be linked up with them next time. Uh, but if you give them a really good review, then your likely chances will be a lot higher if the tutor is available and be linked up as well. But then will other people see those star ratings also? Uh, we want to make the ones that, I, I guess, yeah, well, we can make that, actually. That's a great point. that might be a, just a personality thing. Where a little blog react. where we can have Sue's writing. Yeah. But I think it's a really great idea. And when you talk about just the social emotional aspect, you know, there's not a lot of students that maybe want to connect with, they don't know how mm -hmm. to connect, um, but they might do it that way. So if the SOS piece was even just to, like you said, make a friend, um, they might be more apt to do that than to walk across the room and physically talk to somebody. Definitely. So, um, like, are you going to have, like, say, school gets out of three, so, like, say, from three to five or three to six, tutoring's available in the 
these rooms, and then that's where they'll meet, meet up with their peer? Yes, so like uh, we have Miss Agardia, she'll be able to set the timings based off what her comfort level is, because uh, we don't want to step on any toes with the administration, and we want to follow what they already have in place, and kind of work off of that. So uh, Miss Agardia, I believe she has from 4 to 5, and you can come in around 7.30 to 9.20. And uh, there's always a teacher there that can help you. So we're going to work with her a lot to kind of develop our MVP and uh, sell it to the school district. So you guys will be trialing it here at Patino? Yeah. Uh, this is kind of going to be where we launch from. So we want to get our numbers here. This would be. I know CompuTech High School, and this was a long time ago because so my daughter went there. They had math lab every day after school until 6 p.m. But they hired three college students from Fresno State that were engineering students that came in and did the tutoring. Um, so I know that they still do lab, and most of the CompuTech students are definitely trying to go to college. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. And she went all the time because math was an opportunity for her, right? So I think it's good. I think people would do it. So if you're selling to the school district, why does this have to go on the app? Because uh, we don't want students to be downloaded um, from a link. We would like it to where they can download it directly from the App Store. Can't they just get it off the school district website? They could as well, but they would have to go to a link, and they would have to, if it was on their computer, they would have to click through a link. It wouldn't be, to kind of utilize technology, we thought that the App Store would be the best bet <coughs> for us. But we can definitely include that okay, but on if our My website. school district hasn't bought it, can I still just download the app? No. Uh, you can download the app, but yeah, you can download the app, but it's going to be a dead app. It won't really do anything. Yeah. If you guys are familiar with Canvas, um, they have their app on Play Store and app, um, app Store. And basically, if you download the app, you don't have the username and the password, so you won't be able to log in. Yeah. So it's just the app downloaded, and you can't do anything. And quickly, what's your legal structure? Uh, we have an entire policy, uh, privacy policy set forth, and I believe it's an S Corp that we filed for. So um, we have like the legal structure on the CEO, vice president, executive manager, and online marketer. Um, so we have all of that in our legal structure as well, but it'll be rendered based off of if anybody wants to leave or, yeah, all that stuff. Great, great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions?